Good evening to all of you romantics out there, and welcome to this Valentine's edition of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Sean Keenahan. And I'm Rebecca Baer. Did you know that over 50 million roses are sold every Valentine's Day? And did you know that 73% of all people who buy roses on Valentine's Day are men? Hmm. Sounds like about 27% of men need to step up their game. Well, one Loyola team that has stepped up their game is men's volleyball. The Ramblers had a big weekend at Genteel Arena beating the Quincy Hawks 3-1 last Friday and the Lindenwood Lions in three straight sets on Saturday. This was their fifth straight victory. Thomas Jeschke had an astounding career-high 15 kills in the win, while teammates Joe Smallzer and Eric DeLigge also dominated on the Rambler offense. California native Peter DeSitis totaled 11 digs in the match. Loyola continues its five-game homestand this Saturday, February 16th, against conference rival Lewis University at 7 p.m. The Loyola women's basketball team picked up another win Wednesday night. Taking on the Valparaiso Crusaders in the game at Gentile Arena, the Lady Ramblers started strong, building a 34-25 to 25 point lead heading into the halftime. But the Crusaders did not go down easy and battled back to come within one point of the Ramblers with just under 10 minutes left in the second half. But that's as close as they would get as strong defense from the Ramblers, as well as a timely three-pointer from Monica Albano, all but sealed it for the team. Loyola walked out with a 68-58 victory. The Ramblers will look for their third straight win when they travel to Wright State on Saturday. The men's basketball team lost their fourth, fourth straight to the Milwaukee Panthers, 71-53. The Ramblers will play UIC in the 50th anniversary game at the Gentile Arena on Saturday at 1 p.m. where they hope to put an end to their four-loss streak. The men's soccer team participated in the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center Cycle for Survival last Saturday, helping to raise over $4,200 for rare cancer research. The Ramblers begin their spring exhibition season on February 23rd at Northern Illinois University. Tune in next week to the Sports Locker for my one-on-one -on -one interview with new men's soccer head coach, Neil Jones. Senior track and field star Gina Gal Valgoy broke school records in both the mile run and the distance medley relay this past weekend. Her mile time of 4 minutes and 43 seconds shaved 6 seconds off the previous record. Valgoy was awarded the Horizon League Runner of the Week for her second honor so far this season. Senior Declan Murray also received the Horizon League Runner of the Week for his second consecutive week after improving his own 800 meter school record. Murray leads the Horizon League in the 800 meter and is ranked third nationally. The weekend, the Ramblers will travel to compete in the Margaret Bradley Invitational hosted by the University of Chicago. This past week, our own Nick Amatangelo went to see just where the team practices. This past weekend, the Ramblers indoor track and field team set six school records at the Grand Valley State Big Meet. The men's and women's team have broken a combined 32 records this winter, and the distance programs are coming off dominating performances. However, they epitomize the word Rambler more than any team at Loyola because both teams don't have home facilities to train. We actually have such limited space it's hard to even have a team meeting in any of the rooms or any of the buildings. In the short term, we have to be very creative and patient and uh, continue to uh, chase high standards. Construction at Loyola has turned the tracks on both Hallis Field and at the Alumni Gym into distant memories. So the Ramblers have resorted to using the less than ideal Sean Earl track outside of Mertz Hall as their home track. But that hasn't stopped them from being resourceful. Team facilities include using local track facilities on the north side, the Gentile Arena concourses, and even the pool at Hallis Sports Center. So we do aqua jogging, which is um, a pretty hard running effort where you're basically treading water with uh, by moving your arms and legs, so. But even with these training outlets, the Ramblers still have to spend days braving the elements of Chicago. We have to do that. We don't have a choice, and so we'll go to about any length to get our team a fair opportunity to prepare. It's good just uh, to know that the coaches are always willing to adapt and do stuff to make sure that, you know, we're going to stay healthy. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Nick Amatangelo. It's Valentine's Day, and there's nothing we love more here at the Sports Locker than a good argument. Let's see what Joe has in store for us in this week's Ramble. Well, don't worry, Sean. We always have plenty of amazing stuff in store, especially on the Valentine's Day edition of the Weekly Ramble, oh, yeah. America's oh, favorite oh, game show, this. according to a poll I just made up for this segment. All right, let's meet the contestants. To the right, we have Mary Sugnan. To the left, we have Chris Lehman, rookie on the Ramble. All right, in case you don't know the rules, I'm going to give them four questions each. They're going to answer. I'm going to base my response uh, on what I like the most and then grade their answers. Whoever wins 
is the winner here, but don't forget to go online on our Facebook page after we put the episode up and vote on who you think is the winner, and we'll announce it on the Facebook page. All right, so let's get right into it with it being Valentine's Day. We gotta ask, who's your favorite couple? Mary, we'll, we'll go favorite athlete couple. Athlete couple. Today. I'm gonna have to go with my childhood idol, Mia Hamm, the soccer star, and she uh, married Nomar garcia Parra, who is a former Cub, so you gotta keep it in Chicago, but that's who I'm going with because, I mean, uh, dream couple right there, dream couple. Uh, that's solid, but neither, you know, we gotta go Rory McIlroy and Carolyn Wozniacki. She is much harder than Mia Hamm. Oh, and okay. Rory McIlroy. That's okay, no. Took over for Irrelevant. Tiger Woods and is now number one in the world of golf. Carolyn Wozniacki has already made $14 million in tennis, and she's 22. Come on. All right. Well, I mean, Not Carolyn, expensive. I don't think she's quite as uh, attractive as you as you make her out to be. But otherwise, um, Nomar being a Cub, Nomar being a Cub, I think, I think Nomar and is going to take that oh. point. Oh. So we'll give a point oh. to Mary for that one. Oh. All right, on to the oh. next one. Michael Jordan turned the big 5-0 on February 17th. Yeah. What's his define? I know there's plenty. What's his defining moment? In, in, in his basketball career. I mean, you got to go game six, 1996 NBA Finals. You can't do any dunk contests or off the court things. This is, we're talking about something that happens in the game. That's what made Michael Jordan who he is. The perfect switch on Byron Russell. That's the shot. All right, well, I'm going to, I normally would agree with you, but since I'm going to play strategy on this one, I know most of the people who watch this show are 90s kids. Mm -hmm. Space Jam. I'm going to go with Space Jam. We're checking this. Look at this dunk with an alien on him. He didn't dunk the ball. He didn't dunk he the ball. He plays in the ball. He plays in the ball. It doesn't matter. I will give some credit to Bill Murray, but I mean, the tape all, speaks for itself. Space Jam. Space all jokes Jam. aside, his managerial position with the Charlotte Bobcats is his greatest moment ever. I think that is also his biggest joke. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a Brendan Bond tactic. Split the point here. I'm gonna Boom. have to give you both half a point for this one because. Uh, I sat in my driveway and tried for three days straight to try Space to Jam. duplicate the Space Jam dunk, but that it was a layup. Okay. Well, we either digress. way. <laughs> anyway, all right. Back to basketball. There's been maybe five, ten, one thousand different number one uh, teams in uh, the NCAA basketball so far this season. Who do you think is going to be the number one team uh, come March, Mary? I think I'm going to go with Indiana on this one. Granted, they do have one of the hardest schedules. But, I mean, you look at their, their roster, their bench, they've got the depth for it. I mean, you've got Cody Zeller, Aladipo. I just, I don't, I don't know how you can go any other way than with Indiana right now. They got the roster in depth with two people. So, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. We're going to go with Arizona. They don't play another ranked team for the rest of the year. You may owe all you want, but they don't play a ranked team. The best team they play is UCLA, and they've only had three losses so far. Indiana still has to play Michigan State, Michigan, and... And Ohio and State, so I mean that's just... nobody. All right, well, if you want to talk about not playing ranked teams and why they lose to Cal, who's not a ranked team. Still all right, I think losses. they both have only three losses. I'm disappointed in both of you because you didn't pick the U. Um, because, all right, too hard of a schedule the rest of the way. Uh, too easy too young, schedule. too young, and they lose to easy teams. They, they lost to Cal. They lost to Cal. Nobody gets a point. Come nobody on. <laughs> Next question. Whatever. Final question. Too young. All right, Loyola men's volleyball stupid game anyway. just started their conference <laughs> schedule. And uh, with teams like Ohio State, Lewis in the conference, they've got a lot of tough competition. Do you think they could end up winning this, winning this conference? They really can't. They're going to get second. And the main reason is because they spend too much time doing the Harlem Shake in the weight room instead of actually <laughs> lifting. <laughs> but um, they, I mean, they're oh, going to yeah, get they, second. They yeah. can beat Ohio State too and Ball State. But Lewis is just clearly the best team here. Too many returning first-team all-conference players. Do do? I don't know. I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. I mean, I've covered them for the Phoenix for the last couple years. And this team, more than any, I've just seen – a lot of just comfortability and and they're just cool and collective when they're on the court and I think I mean obviously this weekend is going to be the biggest test they're going to be playing Lewis going to really be playing their first big conference game but I think if any year this is the year that they can do it for sure. All right well I, I think optimism is good cautious optimism is even better we're going to go ahead and give the point to Chris All right. which means look Kitty we have a tie so it looks ah. like the first ever lightning round question on the weekly ramble. All right we have the uh, marmodium right here the Marmol podium. The, the person who can guess the closest to the salary he's owed by the Cubs this year wins the point and the round. I'll give you five seconds each. You better give me a good answer. Closest to his salary. Give me a number. One right now. Give me a number. Per year or total? What they owe him next year. Okay. They owe him too much. Do we tell you right now? Tell me. Nine million. Nine million? Seven million. 9.8 million. Ah! Oh. Oh. This week's ramble because I guess she knows a little bit more about salaries. All right, well, no Harlem Shake here, but we're going to go ahead and send it back to the desk. Well, I guess we do have Harlem Shake. A little shake. bit. <laughs>
Thanks, guys. We'll be sure to hit up Facebook to vote on this week's winner. We're joined now on the desk by a couple of basketball experts, Brendan Bond and Steve Manny. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Nice, nice Thanks. matching pink ties. Mm, they're not they're quite the nice. same color, but that's all right. Each week, we here at the Rambler Sports Locker love to show you the best in Loyola basketball. But there hasn't really been too many Rambler highlights since this new year, so we find ourselves at a bit of a crossroads. But we realize that there isn't much going on in Rogers Park. That doesn't mean there isn't some great ball being played in the Horizon League. So this week, we're going to debut the, wait for it, Horizon League Top 10. Ready, Steve? I think I'm ready. Let's do it. Number 10, it's a pink out at Cleveland State, but that's Ivory James getting the quick pass for right State and putting in the three. Number 9, right State in Green Bay, that's a double team on Alec Brown, but he, that won't work, he's 7 feet tall, easy land. Number 8, the Rambles had a tough time in Milwaukee, but this fast break looks like a bright spot, or not. Poor Kiki. Number 7, it's right State in Milwaukee, Milwaukee Demetrius Harris goes up and throws this one down. Take another look at this one, we have more Milwaukee coming up in a second. Number six, the hardest working player on the court is going to win this loose ball scramble, and that's going to be worth two points and some energy for Jordan Hicks and the Ramblers. Number five, we have Milwaukee's best here. Starts on the defensive end with a big block, leads to a fast break layup, and easy two points for the Panthers right here. Number four, one of the finest plays in the game is the alley oop, and the Detroit Titans have got it down. They pulled off not once, not twice, but three times in the past week. They're playing some very entertaining basketball over at Callahan Hall. Number three, Lady Ramblers down by one at home in the closing seconds against Cleveland State. Basket there by Troy Hambrick for the win. But wait, it was after the buzzer. However, there is a foul with .1 seconds to go. I mean, Hambrick goes to the free throw line for two. First one's up, she ties it. Second one for the win. It's good, we got a walk-off free throw win for the Ramblers. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, back for an encore is Doug Anderson, and that is a huge dunk. Watch out for this guy later on in the Horizon League. It looks like he breaks the rim on there, it's incredible. Number one, Notre Dame and Louisville went to five overtimes. UIC and Youngstown Trade try to match that. Flame star Gary Talton hits a late basket here to send it to overtime. First overtime, Youngstown State, Kendrick Perry will get the ball on the wing here. Hits a step back three and makes it rain. We're going to second overtime here. Now later, it's UIC. They're going to be down by three here. Last minute of the second overtime. Ball gets kicked out to Hayden Humes, who buries a late three to tie it up. UIC ends up winning in three overtimes by five. Wow, that was a rough stuff on Kiki. Yeah, it, it was it was rough on Kiki. The Milwaukee game was tough. That UIC game though, that was that was a crazy one. The that's double exciting. two overtimes. Great work, a guys. Buzzer beaters. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We thanks for having us. We're good. Some call it Singles Awareness Day. Others just write it off as another Hallmark holiday. Say what you want about Valentine's Day, but love is undeniably in the air. So, what's the best way to savor the romance? According to our very own Audrey Bailey, Valentine's Day is a day best served on ice. Valentine's Day, a day of romance, a day of chocolates, a day of terror. So where can we go to escape the perils of the world's most dangerous holiday? We decided to travel uptown in search of a solution. Way uptown. More than a thousand feet up, actually. That's right, this February 14th, there will be nothing more foolproof than a block of ice, some sharp blades, and two sweaty palms interlocking. Well, we heard that it was a pretty fun time to come up here on the 94th floor and to skate around a little bit and enjoy the view. The venue has become somewhat of a hotspot for romance in the past few weeks, as Skating in the Sky Entertainment Coordinator Tim Detmar told us. We opened on, we opened on New Year's Eve, and so what, today's the 11th, so uh -huh. in 40 days I've seen four couples get engaged. It's kind of cool, that's, that's you know. Exciting. It is kind of cool. So even though we may be what some call single, per se, we decided to strap on some skates and take to the ice. And we didn't necessarily fall. All right, I am at Skating in the Sky at the Hancock Observatory deck. And you know, there's always been two things I've never cared for with ice skating, the cold and the ice. So if you're looking for a nice warm place to enjoy some slippery skating, this is the place to be. After mastering the basics, we decided to try some more complex moves for couples. First, we rocked the lunge position. 
and then dominated the pair camel spin. <laughs> no. But our crowning glory was the back inside death spiral. So this Valentine's Day, don't do something crazy like smell roses or eat chocolate. Play nice and stick to the ice. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Audrey Bailey. So that'll do it for this week's show. Thanks so much for tuning in. What we'd really love this Valentine's Day is for you to hop on the internet and follow us using any of the fine social media sources you see below. I just wanted to add that more than 36 million heart-shaped boxes of chocolate will be sold this Valentine's Day. And to remember, when you're watching that romantic movie with your loved one on this Valentine's Day, don't forget to turn out the light.